Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about current sources using MOSFETs. This is our example number four and we will discuss the scaling of currents in this example. Of course we will work out the calculations step by step and also verify these in SPICE simulations. So let's look at our circuit. We have this circuit here. We see three loads and we have our standard current meter configuration using MOSFETs. In this case, we have also two DC voltage sources, VDD and VSS. The values are shown here. And for all transistors, we have, they are matched, but only in the threshold voltage, the conduction parameter, and the channel length modulation is zero for all the transistors. We would like to have the load current here, I1, of 0.1 milliamps or 100 microamps. Here we would like to have 0.4 milliamps and here in the final one we would like to have 0.6 milliamps. But we need to design the width and the length, so the physical dimensions of the channel of the transistors, so the ratios, such that the total dissipated power in the circuit is, the total circuit is 6 milliwatts. That's the design equation or the question. So how do we solve this problem? So let's look at our solutions. Now, calculations first. We know that the total power, the dissipated power, must be equal to 6 milliamps. And we know the total power is equal to the current, total required current, times the total voltage required. The load, the voltage required is given already here. So it is VDD minus the VSS, which is 4 volts. So we know that. So we can write it down here. And we also know that the current and total is not only these load current, but also the reference current is also here, what we need to supply. So we have then the four currents here summed together times the difference in these two voltages. Now we can now work it out and then determine the required total current here, I total. I total is this and V total is this second term. So P total, which is our 6 milliwatts, divided by the VDD minus VSS is the expression for the I total. Now we have the reference current expression, because that's the only unknown at the moment, can be then calculated using this expression. We know this. So 0 0.006, 6 milliwatts, divided by 2 minus minus 2, and the minus 0 0.1 times 10 to the power minus 3, and the minus the 0 0.4 milliamps, and minus 0 0.6 milliamps. And you get this then 0.4 milliamps. So that means the reference current will also be 0.4 milliamps. So in total then you get here, if you count this together, you get 1.5 milliamps. This is also the same for this uh, drain current of the reference MOSFET. So the MR is the reference MOSFET here. That also has the same drain current because the reference current and the drain current are the exact same because the gate currents are all zero. You see also the connection here from the gate node here to the other gates of the MOSFETs by connecting that uh, in parallel. Okay, now the drain current for this reference MOSFET is given by this expression if you use the, again, the saturation region of operation. And this is the VGS R, the R for the reference. This is the formula and the KN is for all of them uh, the same, so we keep it as it is. And now this formula will then give us the value for the VGS here for this MR. But that is also the same for the M1, M2 and M3 because they are parallel. So when you now calculate this and also using the threshold voltage and also other parameters like the KN, you get here two solutions. One of them is the 0 0.2 plus 0 0.6 and the other one is minus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.6. So you follow this uh, analysis. So the first solution is 0.8 and the other one is 0.4. But what is now the valid solution? Now it must be larger than this solution, must be larger than the threshold. So this is larger than the 0.6 and that is valid. But this is smaller than the 0.6 of the threshold voltage, so that is invalid. So mathematically we have two solutions, but practically this is the only valid solution for our circuit. So the VGS of the reference of VGS R is 0.8 volts and we will use that for future calculations. Now, now we will use the Kirchhoff's voltage law for calculating the R, the resistor here. So we know VDD will supply the voltage here, supply the voltage there and also will be then in the connection here with the VSS. So we have now the R is equal to VDD minus VSS minus the VGS R. That will determine now the voltage across the R 
divided by the reference current, which is also the IDR, will give us the following result. So we just substitute the determined value of the VGSR and also the VDD and the VSS, and then we have 8 kilo ohms exactly. So this is not 8 kilo ohms. We know how much reference current we had. And we also know then the necessary information for the ratios now for the W over L. So let's continue and collect the values here and keep continuing with the calculations. And in general, we know also from the previous examples that the current here divided by the, in some of the branches, divided by the reference current has a ratio in this form. Now we know that the Kn is given by this expression where you see the W over L. And we know that since the mu n c ox is for all the transfers are the exact same because they are matched. So m1 is equal to m2 is equal to m3. Only the physical dimensions will change. We can say this is gone and this is gone. Not the w over l, also the half is of course gone. Since the VGS of each transfer is the exact same, we can say this is also gone because the transfer voltage is also the same. So that is also gone. So we can say this is also divided out. And there is no lambda because there is no channel length modulation so that's also divided out. So what you're left here is only this equation. So I of N of the specific transistor branch divided by the I ref here will be then the W over L of that transistor, specific transistor divided by the W over L of your reference transistor. Then we have specifically the following uh, expressions. I1 over IRF for the I1 over IRF here. We have this ratio of the W over L's and we have for I2 this and for I3 this. So we have now three branches related to the IRF. Now we can also write it down in terms of the current because the I1 must be 0 0.1 milliamps and this already is 0 0.4. So the ratio is also already here also as 1 over 4. The other one is 4 over 4 and the other one is 6 over 4. So that means this is a 1. And this must be my, my 1.5. That means actually the following. The width of the, uh, let's say the M1, must be four times smaller than the width of the MR. So we can read it in the following. We can say if we set the channel length, for example, for all the transistors exact to one micro, uh, milli, mi, one micrometers or 100 nanometers, that, that doesn't matter at the moment, for all transistors, then we have the following. W1 over WR, which is then the, the L will be then divided out, will be also 1 over 4, and W2 over WR will be also 1, and W3 over WR will be also 1.5. That means we have now a ratio between the width. So we can say, if we now select now the channel width of the reference MOSFET as WR as 4 micrometers, then we have the W1 will be 1, the 1 micrometer, W2 will be then 4 micrometers, 3 will be then 6 micrometers. So you see by selecting the specific Ws, you also have this ratio if you keep the length exact same. So let's bring down all the data here together. So we have the channel length, we have the channel width reference, MOSFET, we have also data here for reference current and also the resistor and we have here the width. So the simulation results. So let's see what we have from the simulations. You see the VDD and the VSS again. These are the MOSFETs. You see also the length and the width. The M of 1 here is actually the multiplication factor. So we have a multiplication factor of 1 here. This is a multiplication factor of 0 0.5, 0 0.25 I mean. So we go actually by a factor of uh, 0 0.5, so 25 here. But uh, look at the values here. We have the reference current exactly as we want it. And we have our I1, which is 100 microamps. I2 400 microamps and I3 of 600 microamps as we want it. You see the W and the le length of all of them. So the length for each transfer is one micrometer. And W is four micrometer here, one micrometer there, four micrometers there, and six micrometers there. You see again also the VGSR, which is 800 millivolts as we had. So we have 0 0.8 volts. So that is all confirmed. So we can say this is exactly as we wanted. All right, this is our example number four about the current source of using the MOSFETs. And in this case, we use the simple current mirror and we scaled up or sometimes scaled down the currents for a specific design. In this case, we scaled down for the load one. We have exactly a copy for load two and we have scaled up 
by 4 low 3 by a factor of 1.5. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know in the comment section. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video. Take care.